For at least four centuries, Egyptian mummies were transported to Europe, where they were used for the concoction of pharmaceuticals and medical exhibitions, but most shockingly, were systematically ground up and used as paint pigment. Here is the horrifying story of Mummy Brown. Egyptian mummies, dating back up to 5,000 years old, began to be sourced in the Christian West during medieval times due to their perceived medicinal benefits. The blackened bodies which had been ceremonial embalmed were thought to have contained the increasingly rare substance of bitumen. Pitch or bitumen, until then collected in the Middle East, had been used medicinally for centuries to treat a range of illnesses from dysentery, toothaches, but supplies were running out. The bodies and shrouds of Egyptian mummies were erroneously thought to have been soaked in the substance, and even the name mummy is derived from the Persian word for bitumen, mum or mamiya. By the 16th century, the mummy trade was booming, with rogue exporters thriving in England, Spain, France and Germany. Ancient tombs were systematically ransacked by both locals and visitors to Egypt, with not only whole corpses, but also dismembered body parts being traded for trifling amounts. Hands were taken as souvenirs and became a mandatory part of a gentleman's cabinet of curiosities to show friends. The demand for mummies became so fierce that some unscrupulous dealers created counterfeit mummies, the processed remains of executed criminals and sometimes animals. The substance mummia was the ground-up remains of mummies, which was applied as an ointment or dissolved into oral potions. These treatments were wholeheartedly endorsed by conventional physicians, apothecaries, and barber surgeons. By the 17th century, mummia was an accepted and widely available pharmaceutical product and used to treat everything from headaches, bruises, and digestive disorders to even broken bones and epilepsy. Nobility like Catherine de Medici and even royalty such as Francois I of France all secured their own personal supplies of mamia, which was also thought to contain some kind of mystical life-giving power. With Napoleon's occupation of Egypt in 1798, a craze for archaeological tourism saw wholesale raiding of ancient sites, with tourism operators even shifting mummies around to ensure that no visitor was left without some souvenir. In Europe, another bizarre practice was mummy unrolling, the supposedly scientific unwrapping and investigation of an individual mummy. From 1833, surgeon and antiquarian Thomas Pettigrew began public unrolling exhibitions, which included a lecture and often autopsy. These became hugely popular events with people turned away at the doors, while other exhibitions were private showings with selected guests. The French novelist Theophile Gautier described an unrolling where fragrant aromas of balsam, incense and other preservative substances filled the room and a huge quantity of linen bandages were slowly amassed so that observers wondered how they could have been so compressed. Small blue decorative ornaments like scarabs fell away and finally the audience was terrified to see two white eyes with great black pupils, or enameled replicas, as was customary, gazing back at them. It is also recorded that mummies were so freely available that not-so-scientific unrollings became popular parlour entertainment during Victorian times. But perhaps the worst abuse of these ancient souls was the grinding down of mummy flesh to produce artist paints. They are known to have been used by painters since the 16th century, and from as early as 1712, a Parisian artist supply shop called A La Momie began marketing the product. So-called Mummy Brown was an intense brown pigment with a distinctive tone midway between raw umber and burnt umber colours. It mixed well with other pigments and could be used with oil paints, watercolours and for glazing. Artists such as Delacroix and the portraitist Beachy were known to have used it and it was later enthusiastically taken up by the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood painters for its rich, otherworldly glow. One mummy could provide the raw materials for decades of supply, and Mummy Brown continued to be used for centuries. In 1915, a London so-called colour man 
informed the researcher that he had kept his customer supplied with mummy brown for 20 years with the grindings from just one single mummy. Despite criticism of the paint for its unethical origins and technical unreliability, it continued to be sold right up until 1964 when stocks apparently ran out. That year, one manufacturer was quoted as saying, we might have a few odd limbs lying around somewhere, but not enough to make any more paint. We sold our last complete mummy some years ago for, I think, three pounds. Perhaps we shouldn't have. We certainly can't get any more. The medicinal use of mummy had greatly declined from the 18th century onwards. Although, even in 1973, a New York shop was still selling witches' supplies that were labelled as including powdered mummy. But a final respectful tribute to Mummy Brown is a gesture of pre-Raphaelite artist Edward Byrne Jones. One day, while lunching with other artists at home, he was shocked to be told that the colour was made from real mummies. He quickly retrieved his last tube of the paint from his studio and his family conducted a solemn funeral ceremony for the pharaohs, with one of his daughters planting a daisy brush over the buried tube. 